hori ana ko tau atu koe ki te aroaro o o mātua tūpuna i te pō. Tēnei te tūnahe i a koe ki ngā kupu pō hanga hanga, te korua i a koe ki te whakaewarangi o rau aroha nui, te whakakāhu i a koe ki te kaitaka o mihi mai o hā. He wahine mahaki, he wahine marae i te whakawe i te maha o Ngāti Uenuku, kia kaua e whakamā i o tua kiritanga tūturu. Kua nene whā te pairunga, te pairaro o ōkaru, haere i te ao mārama ki te pō whaiariki. Welcome to Mata with me, Mihi Ngārangi Forbes, brought to you by the Public Interest Journalism Fund and Te Māngai Pāho. Later, we'll reflect on Georgina Bayer's political legacy with panellists Shane Te Pou and Jenny Marcroft. But first, Te Pāti Māori have wasted no time in announcing their candidates for the upcoming election, with a number of familiar faces returning to contest the Māori electorates again. But it's fair to say co-leader Rauri Waititi was the flashest. Mm -hmm. Te Kapahaka o Te Whānau a Apanui announced Waititi's candidacy during their final performance on stage at Te Matatini before being named overall winners of the biannual competition. Nō reira, kia hono atu tātou ki te kai ārahi taki, takirua o Te Pāti Māori. Kia Rauri Waititi, tēnā koe Rauri. Kia ora mihi o tira, kia ora tātou. Tai hoa ke ka kōrero tāua mō te matatini i ngā ritua tahi nei. Uh, nō tēnei wiki i ngā roaia Georgina Baia ki te pō. Uh, tēnā, he pehe o whakāro mō te tātāri ki rā? Oh, he, 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 he tua tangata. He tua tangata. Me tēnei pe ataku kōrero. Kare ki te, uh, te rā mō mō tangata i roto i ngā rai hārea ke nei. Uh, tōna mai uh, ki te tū uh, ki mua i te aro aro. Uh, o te hunga uh, tātā, uh, o te hunga kāre e rata uh, ki te ki ngā huatanga me ngā kaupapa katoa e kau e nei ia. Uh, nō reira, kei te, kei te mihia tuau ki te maia o tēnei wahine. Kei te mihia tuau ki te maia o tana tū, uh, mō te tapu o te tangata, mō te tapu anu hoki o te ira tangata. Uh, nō reira, e te, e te hoa, me pera pe ataku kōra, kei te oki atu ngā mahara. Uh, ya māo ko Deb, uh, ka tū tuatahi ki te well, iwa mātou whai kōrero tuatahi, uh, ki roto i te whare nei i reire ke ia. Mm. I reire ke ia, uh, e mina tangi ana, uh, i ngā whakaputa ngā kōrero ya māo ko Deb, me tana harikoa i roto ke māo a i whawhai mo tō tātou iwi Māori. Nō reira, uh, kei te tangi te iwi uh, i tōna ngarohanga i tēnei rā, nō reira, kei te tautukau i o poroporoa ki kia i tēnei rā e mihi. Hāre atu rā, Georgina, e moe, mm. e moe, uh, mm. e oki oki. Uh, ko oti ngā waha o ke ākoe i runga i te mato o te whenua, uh, ara ko ngā mātua tīpuna, kei te karanga hia e koe, uh, kei te whakatete mai rā i te pō, uh, ko mātau ki muri nei e hai hai tia nei uh, i tō ngarohanga i te nei rā. Nō reira hāre atu, whoatū rā koe. Tēnā koe te tūngane, beautiful um, to know that she mm. was there when you and Deb first arrived in Parliament and gave you so much afi, um, so that was uh, the mihi to Georgina Baia. Let's get to te matatini, um, it's been one of your... Um, Kaupapa kōrero, if you like. Um, so Matatini garnered 1.8 million views this year. It produced hours and hours of television, um, online television, yet in 2022 just 2.9 million in funding. You know, what does equitable funding uh, for Te Matatini mean to you and how, would it, how should it be distributed? Well, look, um, e equitable funding would say that if, if there are $1.8 billion, then, 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 then Tamatatini should be receiving around about $127 million uh, in funding uh, on an annual basis. Uh, but if we have a based look at what? Um, what the way it's been funded it at this particular time, this. Well, it's based on audience participation. And so if you have a look at um, the New Zealand Royal Ballet and the New Zealand Symphony Orchestra, those are the funding for those particular. Um, uh, Kopapa are all funded on the audience capture. And so if you have a look at symphony orchestras, around about 84,000. If you have a look at um, uh, the Royal Ballet, it's about 54,000. Um, but if you have a look at the Matatini, um, and as you've said, it's about 1.8 million just in the last um, uh, in the last Matatini, and the one before that was 1.2 million, um, you would then say, well, there is huge disparity in, in, in regards to, to the funding. Uh, and so if, if Te Matatini is meeting over and above the, re the requirements uh, of the funding structure uh, given to uh, the Royal Ballet and the Symphony Orchestra, then Te Matatini should be receiving uh, uh, predominantly more funding. 
uh, because of that. The other one is, um, you know, it's only, it's only in terms of audience, uh, uh, um, audience capture, it's third to uh, New Zealand On Air and to New Zealand Sport. Uh, Royal Ballet and a Symphony Orchestra are nowhere near that. Mm. Uh, when it comes to participation, where there's also uh, funding, uh, um, you know, where also the funding applies to in terms of the measures, uh, you will find that Te Matatini is only second to New Zealand Sport. And so these are the things that we, we're looking at. We're opening the curtains up to this place, uh, and I can tell you, not only is it uh, equitable, not, a, not only is it not equitable or not equal, it's a, it's a racist system that continues uh, to denigrate uh, Tiwi Māori and, and our ability uh, to uh, continue mm. uh, to, um, to perform, uh, to rejuvenate, um, uh, to reposit our mātauranga Māori in a space uh, that captures not just Māori in this country, but uh, uh, non-Māori and uh, many around the world. How would, how would you spend it? Um, you know, should it go to Te Matatini, the board, or the organisation, or would, you, would it be spread out amongst the, um, the tira? Well, look, that's something that, uh, that we'll have to discuss because what we're looking at is that uh, Te Matatini is more than just kapahaka on the stage. Te Matatini is our health strategy. Te Matatini is our education strategy. Te Matatini is our, our justice strategy. Te Matatini is our mental health strategy. And if you have a look at all the strands within that, um, uh, within that one kaupapa, and I can tell you, uh, as an experienced performer, uh, I've been performing with my group, the Final Apanui, since 2006. Uh, this year was the first time uh, I have not performed for them. But my first stand at Te Matatini was 1996. And I can tell you the benefits as somebody who is a practitioner, as somebody who is a, um, uh, 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 an avid participant uh, in, in Te Matatini, it is all of those things. Mm. And so this is, um, this is our Māori strategy to our well-being. And so if, if we're only talking about arts funding, but this needs to be a across the board funding uh, that allows us to do us according to us. Uh, and so, um, you know, Te Matatini is bigger than just what uh, the government uh, fiscal obligations are. You know, we're, we're looking at a whole lot of other things. We've just come out of those floods and I can tell you what, the groups that came, uh, that made the effort, uh, who were more affected by those floods uh, saw oranga uh, and being, bringing uh, Tiwi Māori together. Me, me Not only that, there's the economic benefits uh, me kore, to... Oh, there's monga. also the economic benefits to the country uh, and even to Tāmaki Makoto. Uh, and so, you know, these are the things that Te Matatini brings. Mm. It's not just dance uh, and it's not just uh, an art as, um, as the Pākehā system would uh, Let, let's uh, go to is. Let's go to that, those take um, that the cyclone ha has um, brought to us. So the government has announced an inquiry into forestry slash and land use. Former National Party Minister Heke Parata will lead the two-month inquiry. What does Te Pāti Māori hope is achieved by it? Well, what we hope is that there are some, um, some aggressive policies put in place to ensure uh, that the forestry sector is held accountable uh, for the amount of rubbish that they leave behind. Um, and we're talking about those who are cutting down those trees. You know, you know 87% of the forestry here is not owned. You know, the trees on the land is not owned by us, but we own the whenua. Uh, and it's the whenua that has been denigrated through bad practice and through bad measurements and through bad um, uh, uh, processes being put in place by the law. They're only taking away the minimum uh, of what they are required to do. They should be taking away everything. We, and we should also be looking at initiatives uh, like in, in, uh, in Europe, uh, in Sweden, in Switzerland, uh, in Finland, where they are using the byproduct uh, of those logs to create energy. How do you and strike so a balance? Let's look beyond How do you strike uh, a balance the slash with, with and let's look beyond uh, those. And that those are some of the solutions that the Party Māori are looking at. And we congratulate Hekia Prata uh, in regards to um, the work that she's doing in this space. And uh, she's the right person for it. How do you strike a balance? You know, so many of those jobs are offering, uh, so many, sorry, so many uh, jobs are being offered to Māori in, in the sector. How do you strike a balance between, uh, you know, the whenua and those kaimahi? Oh, we, we will always be working in those forests. What we're talking about is the companies. What we're talking about is the companies and, and um, their ability to be able to maintain uh, the whenua that they have the privilege of um, making money on. 
And so, um, you know, I hope Hekia comes out with some really, really strong recommendations, lowers those measures in terms of the slash cleanup. Um, to, to me, I don't think there should be any slash left behind. And if there is anything left behind, we should be looking at, as a country, uh, um, at uh, what, what reusable energies look like uh, as examples in Sweden and Switzerland and Finland. And so, you know, there are already examples out there for us uh, to look at. And that's, that's, what, that's where I would be heading to. So we know what the problem is. Let's look at some solutions and let's look at some economic benefits that can bring money back into places like Ngāti Pro, uh, to Whareitoa, uh, and other places that have huge forestry interest. Mm. Uh, the other thing is, is that we need to be looking after the whenua. And is forestry a sunset um, uh, industry? I believe so. Um, and so it's not going to be trees. The next thing we'll be looking at is the moana. And so um, we need to look after the moana, uh, and, and those practices uh, need, to be, um, need, need to ensure that we are leaving a safe, productive, and natural environment for our tamariki mokopuna heading into the future. Tēnā and that's a Māori way of looking at things. Tēnā koe mai te ata meri, uh, o te matatini ki te pai o tēnei mata. Tēnā koe i tō haere mai. Ka nui te mihi ki a koe i rawari. Inai nei ka ha... Ka, nei, ka hākari o tātou taringa ki te kai, ka horohea e ngā kō kō tātā ki, kua tai mai nei. Let's talk to our panel now, representing Kawirau's in intelligentsia, political mm -hmm. pundit and writer Shane Tepu, and from Te Nōta, former New Zealand First MP Jenny Marcroft. Tēnā kō rua. Kia ora. What did you make of uh, Rawari's kōrero there? Oh, first of all, I went to Matatini. Yeah. Whānau up and Well deserved. Well deserved. And, uh, you know, they, they had that, that uh, nucleus of... Uh, Two hoi kapa experts, kapa haki experts that helped. So well deserved for them. Uh, in terms of forestry, I don't think it is a sunset industry. It does have its downfalls. I just can't think of any other industry can that leave 30% of their paru behind and not having to clean it up. Mm. That needs to be fixed. But I also think that we need to have a look at other forms of forestry, not just pine, but our native trees, hardwood. I just think we need a long, hard look at it. And uh, uh, the other thing is that a lot of the... Um, pain and the hurt and the destruction that was caused as a result of the slash build-up, many of them uh, fell unfairly on Māori communities that are not insured. Mm. The forestry industry needs to front up with dough and fix it. We're talking about the Matatini there and mm. uh, Te Pāti Māori's done very well to weave itself into Kaupapa yes. Māori and announce their candidates and in fact um, it was uh, Te Whānau a Apanui that announced Rāwari's mm. uh, candidacy. How do you think the Te Pāti Māori is positioned? Well, I think, you know, they've, they've started the year out. Um, if you look at what, what the, you know, the showcase they put on at Waitangi, um, you know, they, they came in after at the back end of the pōhiri with, with um, all the members of parliament and they stole the show. And so that's what they're doing. They are really, um, you know, they've got JT, John Tamahiri, leading the charge with this big showmanship um, kind of state that, that, that they're, they're building up towards the election by putting on a show for Māori. And Māori Dim loves it. So oh. that's, that's literally what, you know, they only have to look at their constituency um, and they're putting on a show for them. And, and they, they've done really well so far to do that. He makes a good point about the yeah. Matatini in terms yes, of the audience absolutely. reach. 1.8 million mm. online TVNZ+. Plus. Um, suggests that it might equal something like 127 million. That's a that's a bit of a gap. Um, yeah, I'm not but, sure. I mean, you... but will they get something? Oh, well, they, they? they will. And you've got to give credit to, to Labor. They've just about doubled it during their own term. Yeah, but it's only 2.9 million. I know million. it is, and it's not enough. But I also don't think it's Te Matatini versus the Symphony Orchestra or New Zealand Ballet. It's about arts, and I think our arts ought to be better funded. And Te Matatini ought when you when you consider that you know they're all no extend the pie rather than cut it up. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Um, do, do you agree? Do you Absolutely. We, we don't traditionally fund mm. our arts mm. to a level that we really could be, and that's something that we need to look at. Now, just credit to um, the Prime Minister, at Te Matatini, he did say that he would be looking at more funding, but, you know, that came hard on the heels of Cyclone Gabriel. Well, the, and also, and, um, after all the seats were filled and they had been performing all day, yeah. every day, they'd got here from the Cyclone ravaged yeah. places Absolutely. around the... Shane says it's not about, you know, it's about not sharing pie, but getting a bit bigger pie, but... 
Why does Te Matatini get so much, such a small slice of this pie? Well, if you look at the history, um, New Zealand first put in that first million dollars uh, for Te Matatini, and that was Tuiriki Delamere. Tuiriki, yeah. Back, back Tuiriki in Delamere. 1998 mm. or, or, you know, yonks ago. And it basically um, stayed like that for Stayed like that for 20-odd mm. years. Now it's at 2.9. It's really, um, I think the conversation needs to head towards what is the potential of Te Matatini. What is the potential of Kapahaka to New Zealand? Not is it this or ballet or um, symphony. It's how can we uh, express ourselves internationally with Kapahaka? We take our but ballet out. Can't we, we, can't we already see that? Because you know every real class is now full. Don't you mean, can't get into yeah. anything. But are people like lining up to learn? orchestra and all those kinds exactly. of things. We can already see what, what Matatini has can. provided. We can. And but how are we going to do that? Yeah. That's the thing. And we have seen like Tuhoe and New Zealand Symphony Orchestra, they, they, they've got a re really cool mm. collaboration that's going to go uh, amongst the Fano early next year. Uh, but here's the, here's the reality. Aotearoa is a very beautiful place, but our really only point of difference between Aotearoa and the rest of the world is our indigenous culture, and, we, and that ought to be the window to the world. No one comes here, no one comes visiting here to go and see our symphony orchestra, yes. but they do come and go and see Kapahaka. Mm. Kapai. Uh, Christopher Luxon gave his State of the Nation speech over the weekend. What stood out for you? Well, I, I commend him in terms of better funding for ECEs. Uh, it does lots of things. It empowers particularly women to come back into the workforce. But I think there's a bigger issue that we need to confront, and that is the fact that there are too many involved in that industry for profit motives, some $2.3 uh, billion. You never hear of the local lollipops. $2.3 billion. billion. You, you never hear of the local lollipops having to have a fundraiser. But why should our kindergartens mm. and our kuanga reo? Mm. So mm. I think there is about equitable funding. It's also not just about funding, it's about the bureaucracy around it. And the other thing is you've got to build the infrastructure. We want more kuanga reo teachers, we want more kindergarten teachers, and we need to reward them better than they, they are. And the hierarchy in terms of payments, they're paid a lot less than tertiary and secondary education. And we need to fix all of that. So Shane's talking about the childcare um, subsidy mm. or rebate, I think that the National Party's calling it. Um, we're at, uh, it is through IRD, and I remember this back in the yeah. early 2000s under the Helen Clark government at the end of the year, you'd get a rebate back for your childcare. Um, do you agree with Shane that it, they need to, you know, just be a little bit careful about the industry and make sure that it's, it's fair? Oh, I think we need to have, uh, I do actually agree with Shane, we do need to have more investment going in so that we have more kids um, going to kohanga. I, I've always believed that. Um, I, I think what we need to, to look at is why is there so much profit inside these organisations, which is making it more difficult for f young families to have their kids inside it if mum or dad wants to go back to work. That really is the issue that has is not been addressed yet. I, this um, funding boost um, uh, won't address that at all. Um, will they just, you know, bump up their fees because mm. there's a, you know, a bit more putia coming in? Um, I, there, I'm a bit cynical about th that and I think, yeah, I think we need to care for the towns. There are towns. So, so there are towns. Sorry, Mahi, throughout Aotearoa where certain uh, companies will they'll, they'll run under different names have monopolies. Yes. And I just think that early childhood care ought to be the focus ought to be on our tamariki and community good, kohanga reo and kindergartens. Not only learning institutions, but they are com they provide community good profit profit. For-profit companies don't. Mokopuna, which run in yes. Auckland as well as up north, yep. um, their kids come for free. You know, mm. they, they, should, they, should they, that sort of... Um, you know, call Hangareo because it operates different yes. to other ACS. Should it be yeah. that perhaps they are funded and then they apply to, you know, they get bulk funded? Yeah, of course. And, you know, and there is empirical evidence upon empirical evidence when Tamariki engage in early childhood... Mm early childhood um, care facilities such as Kohangari or they do better How are we going to pay life? for it? Quarter of a billion bucks. Quarter Nicola Willis says she's going to uh, cull the consultants. Will there be any consultants left in Lampton Key with a quarter of a million? Well, billion? I, just, I just think we, you know, that's easy, that's low-hanging low fruit. Um, you know, uh, we've just had a cyclone. Mm. Um, you know, you do need people to support the infrastructure. You need the IT manager uh, to uh, put the processes in place so you can have an emergency response. That's low-hanging mm -hmm. fruit. The reality is that uh, 
in terms of our numbers and the rest of the work, uh, workforce population, our public sector has not increased. Boot camps, uh, free rides for young people, does it sound familiar? Well, I think um, the National Party, what they're saying around boot camps is quite different from what New Zealand First, with the Labour government in coalition, what they... Um, what we, was, we that did a, then. was that a New Zealand First idea? Absolutely, it was, but it wasn't a boot camp. It was limited service volunteers and it was a collaboration with Ministry of Social Development alongside the De Defence Force and those working with those needs. So um, there had been 800 young people, rangatahi, who had gone through this programme uh, in the time of, of our coalition. We doubled that to 1,600 um, mm -hmm. young rangatahi going through a programme. Now, this type of programme, it's not punitive, which is what a boot camp under national would be. Um, the LSV programme is about engaging young people. It's giving some new skills, developing a sense of pride in who they are, um, giving them experiences which will create resilience in, within themselves, um, as well as understanding role and responsibility. Mm. So that's quite a different thing to a boot camp. Looking ahead to the next mm. poll, what are you predicting? I'm predicting that uh, the Prime Minister's numbers will increase both in terms of personal popularity and in terms of uh, the, the Labour Party. Um, and I think that will be at the cost of not only national, but perhaps New Zealand first. Winston's been pretty quiet, but you know what? It's only March. The election's good. There's a lot of there's a lot of wind, a lot of water to go under the bridge before people really start making up their minds. Yeah, we just had Rawiri Waititi, um, co-leader of Māori Party. Um, what do you think about their? You know, I know it's only March, um, but they are really ramping it up. Oh, absolutely. They know they're going in for the fight, uh, but they can. Any of the uh, any of the seats, uh, you know, going to be closer? Well, I, th I think that um, Labour has mm. put so much money into the Māori space that they need to go out and sell that a whole lot harder than they have been doing mm. because mm. Um, the Māori Party's got nothing to lose, so they're gonna, they are going to showcase on all of, all of what Labour is doing and put the boot in at the same time. Mm. Um, but really, it's, it, it's Labour's to lose. Um, I think uh, we discussed earlier that mm. possibly only two seats might be um, up for grabs. Te tai Huaru and Wairikia, yeah, any other seats you're watching? No, I don't think so. I think they, whilst they have chosen really good grassroot activists in Te Tai Tokoro and in uh, Tamaki Makoto, politics is about re name recognition, recognition. I think they should have hunted a bit harder for marquee candidates. Mm. They don't have it. I think Te Tai Hauru is in play. Uh, the rest of it, I think Labour will hold. What I'm really surprised is that they didn't. Labour didn't get a fresh horse in uh, Waiariki and uh, ran with um, Tamati Coffee, who's a good man, but he's he's lost the seat. And uh, and this was a wave towards Labour. The mm. tide is going out. I think they should have got a new horse. Mm. Uh, let's go to Georgina by now who passed away this week. Um, what are your recollections or reflections on this wahine? Well, I've, you know, I, I read her name out as a newsreader over many years. Mm. And um, so I'd followed her story and it's many, many iterations mm. as a newsreader. So when I was in Parliament, it was such a joy to meet her. Um, and that was the first time I'd met her in, you know, kanohi ki te kanohi. And what really surprised me was that she knew who I was. Um, I didn't expect that. We had a lot of chuckles. We, you know, she complained and moaned about a few things that she wanted to put a, put the boot into about things that were concerning her. But she did it with such good humour, um, and you know, she had some advice for me, which I really appreciated. But the thing that really struck me the most about her was the fact that she had such a an awful, dreadful time as a young person, right, right through many, many years, the abuse she suffered. But she always maintained incredible dignity about not becoming the victim of all of that stuff mm. and actually turning that into a positive force in her life. And that is something that we can all learn from and, you know, just deep aroha for her. Yeah. I always remember this moment on Matangi mm. um, political legacies where she talked about winning, beating the national oh, candidate for wow. the, for, you know, for the mayoralty yeah. and, oh boy. Hey, look, conservative seat, high profile, mm. And she won it. But you know what? If we want to honour Georgina's legacy, we need to decry transphobic 
actions which are taking place. I think if there's a hierarchy of hate, it's Māori trans community there, and we and we ought to protect them, and we need, we need to uh, work with them to advance their call. Mm. They really are at the um, the apex of a lot of hate and 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 narrow mindedness that is is going around. Twenty years since Georgina was in in. Um, in government, I don't think it, things have got much better for our, tr- our trans community. In fact, in many ways, they're getting worse. That'll always be her legacy. Yes. Uh, just being such a, an amazing wahine for, for the uh, Ngāti Uenuku, as we called them yes. today. I mean, she was in Parliament at a really interesting time when not a lot kind of happened. She was in opposition. But mm. what do you think she'll, she'll be remembered for in Parliament? As someone who um, she believed in what she said, who wasn't a, a, afraid of the internal hierarchy. She didn't play the safe game and look for a sort of like a committee position or even a ministerial position. And also she called it quits when it suited her. So, you know, mm. Georgina led, led a chapter of lives. But I just come back to the central point. We need to honour her by empowering our trans community. Mm. And she sounded like she was a person who was always there for somebody to give them a fee, doesn't yep. matter what colour your, you know, your politics was in the house. Yeah, she didn't give up um, her connection to Parliament at all. Um, and I think that is because she knew that's a place where she could make a difference. Um, and she demonstrated that right across her career. Just quickly, what are we looking for in the next couple of weeks for politics? Anything re- coming up? Yeah, I reckon there's going to be a few interesting things playing out. Te Matatini, great place to hear the goss. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know whether you, you know this better than I. Is there a deal in Northland between Shane Jones and the National Party? Let's see. Um, Jenny? You, yeah. Well, Come you know, um, Winston will be back out on the road pretty shortly, um, and I'm sure we'll hear about what's uh, what he's got to say for himself. And you know, where are the rest of these high-calibre candidates, mm. Māori candidates that the National Party keep talking about? Yeah, Have you got any? any? Any ideas? No. I haven't heard of any. Mm. I'm going to give you guys two weeks to go mm. away and do your Kidding. homework on the North, <laughs> Northland seat because Willow Jean's in there and, yes. um, you know, it's a good kaupapa kōrero for, te ma- for mata sure. to talk about. Thank Absolutely. you so much for coming in. <laughs> Tēnā kōrua. Uh, kei wari wari i Don't forget to fill in your census forms. Have you guys done, done it online? On tonight. Paper. tonight. Oh. Online. Uh, ko te mata nei he mata ki te ao, ngā tini mata o te ao haka, ngā mata whetuki ko mahui mai i te huripari, ko te tua wahine ko ngaro i te mata o te whenua, engari ko ana o haki, ka mau tonu. Tēnā ka huri te mata ki kaupapa ke, hei te rawiki. Kanui te, uh, te mehi ki te puna whakatongarewa, me te māngai pāhu, no horo mai. <laughs>